Why does this match feel like it's going to be a typical Forest match? Or is this just me being pessimistic? Welcome to your match preview for Forest vs Palace. Good morning, good evening or good night. Hope you guys are doing well and welcome to your match preview for Nottingham Forest versus Crystal Palace. But before we start, as we all know, there was some really sad news yesterday with the passing of Larry Lloyd, one of the legends from Forest who lifted two European championships. Now, that was before my time, but I remember him as a kid on the radio, dialing up from Bedfordshire, listening to fuzzy noise of him and Fletcher on Century 106 or thereabouts, depending on how much signal you could get from that far down south. So for me, the voice of Larry Lloyd will always live with me. And here on FFTV, we want to pass our condolences to his friends and his family. And I'm sure you guys will. I've You already have. I've seen it in the community post we've put up. But I'm sure you want to put your thoughts and comments down below. So with that said... It's back to footballing matters. And that just needs to remind us that football isn't the be all and end all of everything. But we must move on and talk about it. So let's get it started. You guys, by the way, thank you. I asked for 440 likes on yesterday's video. You hit over 700. See, it is well within you to hit that like button. So let's set another like target today. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button and make sure you subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you are new. Let's go for, let's pick a number here. I, I want to go for 480, which you guys should easily be able to do. So if you look down below, look at that like number. If it's below 480, you know what to do. Hit that like, it's completely free. And is it too early for me to whip out the Forest Hawaiian top? Thank you to Foco for this. It's getting summery outside. If we win this game, it may be time to whip out the beachwear. If you want to grab one of these with 15% off, Foco have added a 5% discount code on it. Use code FFTV15. The link's in the description down below. And trust me, you're going to need your happy clapper bottle for this one because I'm really worried about this Crystal Palace match. And why do I think this is going to be typical Forest? Because if Forest were to win... As Luton have Spurs away, which even that one I'm not confident about. But let's go on paper football here. If Luton lose to Spurs, which they should do away, and Forest were to win, will be three points clear, technically four, as we have the superior goal difference. If Forest draw this match and Luton, on paper, lose to Spurs then Forrest will come out of the relegation zone. And that, for me, feels like the more typical Forest result. That we do enough to get ourselves where we need to be. But us as the fan base will have to carry on with the stress for the rest of the season. These next two home games are huge for Forest. Imagine, just imagine, put yourself with me with your Forest Hawaiian shirt on. Five days from now, Forest have beaten Crystal Palace. Forest have beaten Fulham. Luton have lost to Spurs. Then they go to Arsenal away and lose. Forest have a six, technically seven point gap on Luton with no more deductions in points coming our way. <sighs> Can you see it? Can you see it? I, I don't know. I think it's going to be typical Forest. But let's get into this. As always, we're going to preview my predicted team, what I think Nuno will go with and kind of what I want to see on this team. We'll talk you through the uh, Crystal Palace team and then we'll get into where I think it will be one lost or drawn so let's jump off and let's let's just remind everyone of the last team forest fielded uh when we drew with who it was luton my god it feels like a decade ago so langa played on the left origi on the right mgw and then chris wood started up front i think there's going to be changes here now we are not certain about the fitness of certain players but i've had hints in terms of who's fit and who's not and chris wood i think will be fit enough to start so Chris Wood, for me, will start, obviously, with Taiwo being injured. In terms of other positions, Bolly took an injury during the international break. He came off, I think, about 40 minutes um, into his international game. There's been no update to suggest he's not fit. I think Bolly is fit enough to start. 
So if he is fit and making that assumption that he is fit, I would start him. If he isn't, I'd drop him out for Omar Bamadeli. And obviously Murillo is Murillo. He has to start. Nico Williams had a good couple of games with Wales. Obviously, they went out to Poland, but he put his penalty away. So we're going to have no Neocarte syndrome, hopefully, from him. And he is showing some good form right now. Where I think the first change will be is Tuffalo coming out. I do believe that Einar is fit and Tavares is close. I think Einar is going to be the one who starts at left back. And I think that would be the right choice. I still think the number one for that, again, I can't believe I'm saying it, is Tavares. And I think Tavares, if he is fit, will come back in. But I don't think that might not be till the Fulham match. So I think that will be the back four with Cells obviously in goal. Where I want to see the changes, and I'm not convinced we'll see it. And this is something I've been begging for since the inception of time, man. Since, you know, bread was invented, since the wheel became round. I want to see this combination in the six and the eight. Dominguez and Sangare. It's so balanced. It looks like it should work, again, on paper. In reality, it should work on the pitch as well. Dominguez doing that, that hard yards, man. Being that terrier that gets around, wins the ball back, coming up all over the pitch. And then Sangare, who is a good passer of the ball. I still don't get this whole agenda against Sangare. People are so impatient with him, yet they're prepared to let Yates carry on, who is a far inferior player to him. And that Yates-Sangare combo did not work for me at all against Luton. Dominguez and Sangare seems more balanced. So those are the two I would go with in the six and the eight or the double pivot, whatever you want to call it. Now, I am going to make some wholesale changes into the front three lineup. I want to see Alanga dropped. I would drop Alanga and I would bring hudson Adoy on the left-hand side. Now, the reason for that is is because Einar is an attacking fullback. Einar will do what Tavares does and can get up there and help out and create that double overload against Palace's right back, who potentially their first choice may be out. So we may be up against Nathan Klein, for example. We'll talk about that in a minute. But I want to see someone who's a bit more attacking than Tuffalo coming in there. If Tavares is fit enough, I would start him. Let me add that to you. But I think it will be Einar. And if Callum Hudson-Odoi has a sparring partner, we get the best out of him. And I think he could be really key to this match, especially when it comes to shots against Henderson, which we'll talk about again in a second. In the 10, I'm going to leave Morgan Gibbs-White. As long as he's off corners, I love him on the pitch. Just take him off corners and set pieces. I'm dropping Origi. And I think enough is enough, man. It's time. It's time for Reyna to make his first start for Nottingham Forest. Having joined us in January, he's got a handful of minutes under his belt as substitute appearances, and he hasn't had time to impact the game. Now, there's been a lot of say about him over the international break, winning player of the tournament, getting two assists and a goal um, for his country, uh, USA, and playing really, really well. Now, he was playing on the left-hand side, but we know he can operate on the right-hand side, but we know his more natural position is in the number 10. But he is ready to be deployed. And I think having Alanga on the bench is the right choice because after 70 minutes, if it's still a tight game or hopefully Forrester winning by a goal or two, then you put Alanga on a fresh Alanga with his pace against a tiring um, Crystal uh, Palace back line makes more sense to me and means more balance. Now, there has been a lot of talk where people are saying, OK, for example, drop Dominguez. Put Morgan Gibbs White in the eight, put Reyna in the 10, and then bring in um, Alanga on the right hand side. I'm not fully with this. I think the six and the eight needs to be Dominguez and Sangare, although I'm not against this. I could see this potentially happening, uh, but I don't think Nuno will do it in this game. This, though, would be an extremely attacking team. And this would send a message from Nuno that we are out here to win the match and we're not going back to Cooper Ball. And we're going to start playing Nuno Ball. The stuff we saw against Newcastle, against Man U, West Ham, etc. But I just don't think he will do it. I think Dominguez is extremely important to the team and he does bring a bit of balance to it. So for me, this is the starting lineup I would go with. Do you guys agree with it or not? And what changes would you make, if any? Let me know in the comments down below. 
Okay, let's move on and talk about the Crystal Palace team. And don't forget, if you haven't already, hit that like button. We need 480 today. I know you guys can do this. So this was the Palace team that roughly started in their previous match, which was against Luton. And they also let in a last minute equaliser against them. But Palace haven't played in about three or so weeks because their game was cancelled for the FA Cup. So they had an extended break where uh, Glasner, their new manager, took them away, warm weather training and what have you. So they should be quite fresh for this game. But they do have some injury concerns. And um, Menez, I think that's how you pronounce it, their right wing back, the Colombian, who is actually pretty decent. There's talks that he might not be ready to start, which would be a plus for Forrest. The other one that's 50-50 is the danger man, of course, Elise. Elise has been training this week, but will Glasner be ballsy enough to risk him against this Forest match when they too have games? I think they got Bournemouth away next on Tuesday. Maybe we'll see. I think Elise starting from the bench and coming on with 20 minutes to go. I really don't want to see a Palace with Eze and Elise on the pitch. I think that makes them quite strong. But I do feel if uh, Manoz, or Manoz, I don't know how to pronounce it, wherever his name is, isn't playing, a couple of options they've got is to bring Nathan Klein here as right wing back. There is some talk amongst the Palace fans that potentially you could see IU coming in a right wing back position and then maybe, I don't know, Eze switching out to the right hand side and then someone like, I think Eduardo's injured, so it would be like a schlup coming in here on the left wing side position or you could see Glasner move to a back four. But I think that's quite unlikely because Glasner is a three-back style manager. That's always been his main forte and main go-to. Players that impress me in the Palace team, um, I like this young kid, Wharton, that they picked up from the championship. He's doing the Decore role really well. If you haven't seen the preview with Rich, make sure you go and check that out. Uh, sorry, not with Rich. We've got Rich coming on tonight, by the way, um, with D from Back of the Nest. Check it out because he does sing his praises as well. Is Eze the one that stands out? Eze and Elise together are a formidable combo. I'm sure Palace fans watching this are like, oh, here we go, Eze, Elise. It's their equivalent of people talking about Morgan Gibbs-White from opposition teams. But overall, this Palace team isn't quite there yet. They still need investment, in my opinion. They've still got a bit of deadwood. They're still kind of patching their team together. But the big one is that Johnson is injured. Sam Johnson, <clears throat> who Forrest were close to signing in the January transfer window, got injured in the international break for England and won't be able to, well, he'll be out for the rest of the season. And hence the return of Dino Henderson to the city ground. Now, the Palace fans are not sold on Dean Henderson whatsoever. They feel that he doesn't come off his line enough. The same stories we had with him, his distribution was crap. Last year with us is crap for Palace this year. And he still lets in those worldies from a long distance. So Forrest, and we know how passionate Dean Henderson is about Forrest. We know he was there chest thumping and fist pumping the crowd and what have you. But when we take our, uh, you know, love of those players who ad adhere to the fan base, take those goggles off and you do break it down. Was Dean Henderson that good at Nottingham Forest? And honestly, if you look at it objectively, probably not. Probably not. But what do you guys think? Would you have him back? And this is why I think it's going to be extremely important that Callum hudson Adoy plays this game. Because when you look at our team in terms of long-range efforts, the only person who I have any trust or any faith with from shots outside the box is that lovely finesse that hudson Adoy has in and around the edge of the box that he can actually bag it in to the back of the net. And I think he's going to be the most important player on this team. I don't trust Morgan Gibbs-White from distance. I don't trust Chris Wood from distance. Definitely don't trust Alanga from distance. Callum hudson Adoy, I do trust. And I do think he's got it within him to do that. But what do I think about this game? How do I see this game playing out? I really believe Forrest can win this. I really believe it's time to whip out the Hawaiian shirts. Don't forget, 15% off. But Forest of Forest, man, we've seen this story written too many times. As I said a couple of weeks ago, I think we'll stay up. But I think we're going to be stressed out until that final game against Burnley. 
And this one stinks to me of a typical Forest one all draw. We'll take the lead. We'll be comfortable for the most of the match. We'll miss a couple of sitters. And then Palace will equalise with like 10 minutes to go. Then they'll put a barrage onto our defence. And then suddenly we'll walk away thinking, well, at least we didn't lose. I hope I'm wrong. I don't want to be negative. I want to be realistic now. But hold that thought in the back of your mind. If we can beat Palace and we can beat Fulham, we potentially go seven points technically with the goal difference clear of the bottom three. And that's something that I want to hold on to. Get your score predictions in down below. Coming up tonight, we've of course got the Predictor League at about 5 o'clock. Then we've got Grumpy Old Reds at the later time of 9.30 where we will have Rich on. You guys love Rich and his popcorn. So make sure you tune in then. Get your score predictions in down below. Get those like up to at least 480 likes. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And we'll see you later on this afternoon. Come on, you Reds.